Hi, I am Libuš Jarcoviakova. I am photographer. I am from Prague. And that's all. Hi, I'm Klara Tasovská. I'm director of a film I'm Not Everything I Want to Be. Uh, with the uh, main protagonist, uh, Czech photographer Libuš Jarcoviakova, and we are in section Panorama. My name is Lukáš Kokeš. I'm the producer of the film. I'm not everything I want to be. Uh, for me, it's a story of finding your personal freedom and of finding who you are in this world. So come and see it. To, co se teď děje, je tak plné emocí. Deseti tisíce lidí všech kategorií zaplňují okamžitě město. Mám pořád pocit, že skončila válka. Kladívka revolucionářů rozklovala ten monstrózní plot za několik týdnů. Berlínská zeď padla a je po věčnosti. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbobak and this time we are discussing the film I'm not everything I want to be. Hi, welcome to the Teddy. Welcome to the Berlinale. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, maybe I would like to ask first of you two, um, the creators behind the film. Um, how did you encounter Libusha's work for the first time and what impression did it leave on you? Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, and thank uh, for having us here. Uh, thanks a lot. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the first idea of making a uh, film actually came from Czech TV who wants to, they wanted to have some TV, uh, TV uh, uh, portrait Portraits. of oh. Libuše, yeah. something, uh, you know, uh, for TV. But uh, when I met uh, for first time Libuše, I was so excited of uh, her works and uh, of whole story, which told me that I uh, definitely immediately decided to make uh, some bigger film about right. her. Yeah, I also remember that Clara was at Berlinale like four years ago uh -huh. and when she came back uh, home, she told me, I met some people from the Czech television and they, they said to me that they would have a project for me um, that would be nice to make together. And I think that was the point where the really like this idea uh, was born. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that it started at Berlinale, actually. Yeah, yeah full circle moment. Um, yeah, and Libusha, you knew already at an early age, we learned from the film, that you, that you wanted to be a photographer. And I wonder, what was it about photography that, um, that pulled you in so strongly? Uh, probably uh, the work from Josef Kodelka, because mm. he, at that time he did uh, the photography for theatre. Yeah. And there were some shop windows with his photos in end of the 60s and it was very strong for me and I, I visited this, this shop windows regularly mm -hmm. and this, it was the beginning and second I, I was growing up in the very visual family because my both parents were painters and artists and uh, because of dominance of my father was was uh, absolutely sure I can't be painter. So the good option was photogra photography. So somehow it was the beginning, long, long ago. Mm. Yeah, I see. Um, now, 
This is a really large archive that you work with in the film. It's thousands of, of photographs and images that you had to go through and somehow organize it together to get a full movie out of it. And I really wonder how did you approach this process? How did this process go? And how did the film take its final form? Yeah, so uh, I think uh, in uh, our computer was uh, in one time uh, 70,000 of photos, uh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. so we have to, had to organize it somehow. And also Lebuchev wrote her diaries for the whole mm. life. So it was uh, also tens of thousands of uh, diary pages uh, what I uh, had to re read yeah. and uh, organize, organize some, somehow. And it was and also like the, the, the basic structure is actually chronological. Yeah. Like yeah. the beginning was when Libusha was 16 years old and started to take photos and write diaries. So mm -hmm. we actually knew what, what is the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then there was all the yeah. huge amount of work uh, yeah. in developing the story from the beginning, actually. Yeah, but I tried to find some plot points in her story in diaries, and uh, then it helped me make some structure for the film and uh, the, the divided it to some chapters and uh, work with uh, some small capitals of chapters, mm. you know, because yeah. uh, the uh, huge, the story was totally yeah. huge. But Actually, those chapters, they were always connected with the different city where Libusha mm. was going. So the first right. chapter was Prague, obviously. Then it was Tokyo. Then it was Prague again. Then it was Berlin, uh, Tokyo and Berlin. So yeah. all those physical um, movements that Libusha has made throughout the whole story yeah. They were guiding us, basically, in structuring the story. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the time uh, when she always decided to start uh, again to be another, uh, another person. <laughs> another <laughs> person. Better of, person. Better per person of, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That's true, basically. Each chapter is always like a new beginning. That's right. Yeah. 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 On the journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but then, it's also just fascinating to me because you say that there is like this massive archive and obviously the film also touches upon very deeply that recognition for you came very late for a very long time there was no institutional support behind your work and I also not personal so right absolutely and then like I really was like wondering how did you keep track of all of this work how did you so preserve was, all of it okay it was uh, partly a little bit uh, intuitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always outsider, I was always out of box. So, and I have this, this inner engine uh, to, to make some, some, I know, I don't know, it's, it was somehow natural for me and uh, working without audition was pretty normal mm -hmm. and I was used on it. Uh, uh, and I have, uh, in the moment uh, we met, it was more or less uh, big chaos mm. because I, I have never ever, uh, okay, I have had already some, some small uh, or an exhibition, big exhibition in Arles and so on and so on. But Clara worked with pretty raw material and uh, for me was it, uh, you know, at that time, after the big uh, exhibition in there were uh, really several young uh, directors, documentarists, and so on. Everybody wanted to make a movie ab about me, and I was I I, I was not interested, mm -hmm. or it was pretty pretty uninterested for me, and it took me several. Uh, months be before I registered who is she and okay. <laughs> I can trust her absolutely and in the moment when I have had this feeling I put it everything uh, 
free yeah. uh, and I was already, I, I felt I'm in good hands. Okay. Um, yeah. But regarding, regarding the, the work with the archives, I maybe want to uh, mention that there, there was a fundament of photos that has been scanned in high resolution and mm -hmm. organized. Uh, I want to mention Lucia Cerna, mm -hmm. who is uh, Libusha's curator, and mm -hmm. that was like the basis. But then there were like thousands of never scanned before negatives. Yeah. Clara had the opportunity to look through the physical, you know, negatives. Um, and then there was this big trust between Libusha and Clara that Libusha allowed us to also work with. Uh, uh, when you publish a book, you always choose like uh, the best frames for the book, for yeah. publishing the book. In the film, we were able to work with sequences of all the images mm -hmm. that, that are recorded on the film strip. Yeah. And Lebusha gave us the, the, the trust and opportunity to, to use all those frames. Yeah. Not only the privileged ones, the best ones, but all of them. Mm. So that we, or Clara and the editor, Sasha Kashev, they could create sequences where sort of movement starts mm. to appear. That's yeah. what, what is yeah. unique about the, about the style of the film. Yeah, yeah. because we tried to find uh, some movements and also Lebusha's presence because uh, we want uh, uh, to, uh, mm, mm, to have her uh, as guide uh, as well in photographs, not only uh, in voiceover, so... Like yeah. her perspective, that yeah. from the <coughs> beginning we wrote somewhere a sentence that we want the audience to look at the world through Libusha's eyes. And that was basically also the key mm. for, the, uh, for the technical uh, making of the film. When you want to show the world through Libusha's eyes, the most natural thing is to use only her photographs, yeah. because everything other, everything like yeah. another material that we would shoot, that would be our perspective already. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that was the moment when we, together with Clara and Sasha, decided that we want only use Libusha's photos. Yeah, yeah. and also she, uh, she worked uh, on it uh, for her life, so and why, yeah. why didn't they use it? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, right. But now you mentioned two very important things here. One of them is editing. Obviously, you said there is no shot material in it. It's all Libusha's photographs. Um, so editing obviously plays a key role in how the film comes together. Can you talk a bit about this particular process? Yeah, definitely. I'm so happy that I met uh, my editor, Sasha Alexander Kashev, uh, who uh, was not only editor, but also a sound designer of the film, because, you know, we, we had uh, a f uh, totally empty timeline, some photos, uh, some uh, diary notes, and nothing Not else. No sounds. Yeah, mm. and so we had to fill it somehow. And uh, he was so good; uh, uh, he he could he can uh, he could uh, find all these uh, sounds uh, mm. and everything. And uh, we and he was above all; he was very patient. Mm -hmm. The whole editing process took two years, okay. but really like Monday till Friday from nine to five. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and also some weekends and then <laughs> yeah. uh, we... It was like yeah, factory work, was, really. Yeah. Mm, because as Clara mentioned, at some point there were like 70,000 pictures. In the cut, in, in the film, yeah. there are three thousands of them. Mm -hmm. So, and Sasha was basically responsible for putting one frame after another yeah, on the yeah, timeline yeah, yeah. so that the whole movie, which is like nine, 90 minutes mm. long, so that it emerged somehow. So yeah. it was his. So they, yeah. they became expert on my life, oh. which is very yeah. funny. I can <laughs> ask you all the time when I forgot something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was. <laughs> yeah, what happened? Happened? yeah, what happened? <laughs> but how is it for you to to open up? I mean, it's so personal. Like your diaries are okay. In the hands uh, of others. I have had already one ex uh, experience like this because it was published uh, 2017 when I came 
when I was born, let's say. Uh, <laughs> it was published one book and it was also based on my diaries and at that time I have a big troubles with it because yeah. it was uh, new. Uh, new and so, and then I decided uh, it's not only my, uh, my uh, uh, it's m absolutely universal. And mm -hmm. if I am able to take it and give it in this way, why not? Because I, I think it has something educational. Edu edu educational. Mm -hmm. yeah. Educational insight. Yeah? Because yeah. such a life, uh, try to live many people or, or live. Uh, and Those dilemmas are universal always. Like yeah. the question whether you should start a family, whether whether it's important to have children or not, whether it's important maybe to be a free photographer instead of taking care of children or somebody yeah. else. Or yeah. to work in assignment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and, yeah. To be right. professional. And so um, I have to, st uh, it was points where I struggled, but uh, when I make decision, it's okay. And I'm just only the, the somebody, somebody who is, who can uh, be behind the scene, yeah. uh, so it was already okay. Yeah, yeah. but and also what uh, was important to me, it's uh, Lebusha's openness and also uh, her brutal, uh, how honesty. to say, honesty, mm. because it's, uh, I think it's uh, something real. And also I love, uh, you know, contemporary literature, literature uh, for example, any Erno from France, uh, mm. or uh, Edward, Louis. Edward Louis, or uh, yeah, and they all make this these stories. They call it autofiction. Yeah. yeah, based on personal experiences, but a little bit fictionalized. Mm. Yeah, and also with brutal honesty and yeah. uh, openness. openness. Yeah. It's uh, something for me very uh, important. Yeah. Yeah, right. There was one more thing that I, I want to get back to. We will definitely talk a bit more about all these aspects that we just touched upon now. But this element of movement, I mean, like, yeah, photography is still images. Now you are transferring them to a new medium, to the moving image that's also movement. And you mentioned this very particular element of Libusha's work that there were these sequences which created already some sort of a movement. But I really wonder, as a filmmaker, what does it, what does that do to you when you work with the still image, which is at, at the end of the day at the core of the moving image as well, of course. I wonder, does it make you more self-conscious about, about the medium that you are working with? Or, or what is going down in your, in your head when you, when you do that? Oh, I love it. I loved it so much, this work, because it's it was so creative for me mm. and uh, something new, you know, and... Uh, Maybe also there is a connection with us, because Clara, before she started making films, she studied visual arts. Yeah. Ah, so okay. I think that she has, like, a little bit different perspective on... Yeah. Making Make films, films yeah. and so on. <laughs> because, yeah, and uh, also I try, uh, when I studied, uh, I uh, I make some uh, I made some uh, exercises uh, also only from photos so I uh, I knew that uh, it's possible it, it's possible mm -hmm. so and also you know I love uh, this film uh, from uh, Chris Marker La Jette. Mm. it's uh, very I don't know nice the title film. in English but it's from yeah. 60s yeah. La Jette yeah. in, in French it's like classical film made of photographs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's possible built uh, two photographs also built some board, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. But but I didn't I didn't believe it uh, at the start that it's <laughs> a good idea to make a film only of from photographs. Yeah. Uh, because I thought it would be boring some way. Uh, but Clara believed it and she was like really convinced yeah. that it's possible and then then we presented the film um, to some professionals and we met Ika Vehkalakti who is like um, in our documentary uh, milieu he's a very well known Finnish producer mm -hmm. documentary producer and tutor advisor 
and then we met uh, also uh, Maya Daisy Hawk, the editor behind Navalny, mm -hmm. for example. But she she did a lot of films, and they supported this idea that yeah, let's do it. Let, it's like it's pure editing when you make. It's a bad word, you know, slideshow. It's not a good word <laughs> for this, but it's pure editing yeah. actually, and you can do everything mm. what is in your imagination. Plus, what I like about it, when people start to watch it, it's a little bit weird, like the first two, three minutes. And then you completely forget that you are watching still images because your brain starts to operate on different level you start to imagine and count and create your own mm. movements between the images and for the audience it's like a different type of experience i would say and that's what i like about it that it forces you to to watch it like differently it's yeah. not like normal movie it is but it's not i don't know it's something <laughs> between that's what i like yeah. yeah 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 and i mean these sequences that you talked about which already in themselves create some movement that really helped with this with mm. this experience that you just described very nicely but i was also wondering libusha that um was this kind of in your mind did you try to like experiment with with creating this movement or did it just come from somewhere uh, else. Okay, I studied photography, yeah. and I always I was the worst student in all schools I studied here, yeah. and I was not as uh, I was total unsuccessful uh, student and photographer, so it pushed me to do it to just follow my way, and yeah. somehow I did it from really beginning. I like I loved always uh, when the some this uh, imperfection and and some some uh, photographic mistakes and uh, something yeah. like this and then also uh, sequencing and I don't know exactly why but uh, I developed uh, my own uh, style let's say uh, without knowing it without uh, without mm. have any proof for it but I did yeah. it mm. and it helps now yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 it was yeah. good preparation yeah for I think you waiting mm. for us yeah, yeah, yeah. and exactly. preparing this thing six so years or yeah. <laughs> 50 <laughs> not? Yeah. And some articles <laughs> that the, the people were writing that Libusha was ahead of her time <laughs> that's one of the uh, elements yeah. She took like this, this series ahead of the time snapshot f for the future mm. yeah. to meet yeah. Clara, who was able and to make Instagram this. Save selfies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. funny, but uh, uh, you know, but this is really this conscious, unconscious mm. process because, uh, but I have really, uh, I was uh, mentally somehow I was pushed to do it in this yeah. way, so. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, femininity and femalehood plays a very important role in the film, and it really imbues your entire uh, work. Um, and there are like a lot of things that the film puts forward, which are still very resonant today, from self-determination um, to choices about abortion. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on this thematic of the film? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very interesting for me because I looking for some, you know, a character uh, who uh, could who can uh, embody these uh, topics, you know. Mm. So because uh, yeah, Lebouche uh, left it. Uh, I think 50 years ago, but uh, it's still very uh, relevant. Relevant, and uh, I also deal with uh, these topics: uh, mm. how uh, work and live, how um, how to combine, uh, yeah, yeah, like this, these things, uh, or family life and yeah, and motherhood career. and these mm. things, and also, yeah, it's it's uh, the relationship with your body maybe mm -hmm. is also an, yeah. an important topic especially nowadays um, it was actually um, good luck that Libusha had all those elements in the diaries and mm -hmm. in her head basically mm -hmm. she, she is the force behind all those questions 
And we, when we um, had the first draft of the whole story, we saw it already there, yeah. that these topics like organically grow right. from it. Mm -hmm. So it, of course, there, there was some um, intention to bring those story elements to the light, mm -hmm. but they were already there. So Clara had yeah. just mm -hmm. to notice them and work with it around yeah. somehow. Yeah. But yeah, definitely from the beginning, we knew that these topics and themes can uh, help us to make a story that could be relevant also for young audiences, yeah. for example. But Ooh. also Libuše had it uh, tough, uh, more tough uh, as nowadays people, because, you know, uh, be queer at that time, it was uh, in Czech Republic, uh, how to say, it was... Uh, I would say pretty simple, <laughs> but <laughs> just only for me, because it's it's question of attitude, yeah. That, 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 of course, it was uh, uh, not a uh, very public uh, topic, but we uh, it was not illegal, and it was, uh, you know, it was all... Maybe the attitude is the most important word mm. because if you was uh, independent from the nature, out if it's your your the main character to be independent and not to to collaborate with the regime and so on. So it's the part of it. Yeah. yeah. But but actually, uh, to be to have like queer uh, relationships. It was illegal before the 60s in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. During the 60s, it was decriminalized. But it was still a problem, I think, uh, at be, work you or... You could be uh, blackmailed. Yeah. yeah. Just in the case you wanted to have something from the regime. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you want to have good work or good mm. position uh, somewhere, or because of children and what I know, blackmailed. Yeah. Mm. It was the, the really uh, dangerous uh, topic. But I was, I I worked, I I worked mostly some odd. I did mostly some odd jobs. Mm. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I was uh, was living by my parents, <laughs> and they were pretty unhappy because of it. But anyway, mm. I needn't to get uh, the, uh, the ha uh, apartment from yeah. the regime. And it gave me the freedom. So uh, uh, mm. de definitely I'm not trying to, mm -hmm. to down, uh, downward it, because it was for many, many people problem. But uh, mm. uh, there were the way. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. was the We will come back to this topic for sure. But I really wanted to also ask about the various mm -hmm. female influences that we see in the film that had an impact on you personally or on your work. And here there were like really many different kinds of um, feminine uh, role models or, or encounters that you had from, from Yijina, who you mentioned that she was really good with using her femininity. Mm -hmm. um, then for Esther Kumbachova, mm -hmm. who was like a role model mm -hmm. to you, as you as you say in the film, or Eva, this young girl mm -hmm. that you met at tea club, and then of course Magda mm -hmm. um, towards the end of the film. Can you tell a bit about your relationship with these women and how they influenced your work? No, I, I was growing up in the pretty much uh, uh, masculine uh, mm. society. I have mostly only only uh, uh, friends which were boys, uh, and uh, you know it's very funny. In my in my personal story, I was uh, heterosexual first ten or more years of my life without any. Any uh, idea to change this this yeah. attitude? Then, were, then was the long period of bisexuality, and first through the relationship with my partner Magda, it uh, I changed completely the attitude. But from one uh, some point, the women started to be important for me. Esther Krumbachova was natural. The the uh, this is the maybe the one of the most important uh, personalities of Czech New Wave and she yeah. was really filmmaker in in uh, each millimeter of her life and everything was she told was important 
And uh, when I came first to this tea club, uh, something like 82, I suppose was it, uh, I saw something which was so friendly, colorful, vivid. And from the first second I knew I'm somehow I am the part of this society and I want to be there as much as possible. And definitely I knew I want to photograph there one day. And it took several months before it was mm -hmm. possible. And uh, yeah, women are important. And they were important in my life. And they are important in my life. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well, that comes through the images and, and the film as well, of course. Let's talk about the club then. Um, obviously, that's also a very big part of the film. Um, can you tell us a bit about this this club and this place? How how was it um, back I, then in the eighties? I 80s? think it, the space is was maybe six twice so big as this studio. Mm -hmm. It was not it was not huge. Yeah. It was the, in the pretty center of Prague, next to Wenceslav Square. Uh, it was open from, I, I, I think just only one day in the week was closed, and from 8 till 3 o'clock of the morning there were always full of gay people, but not only gay people. And what was important, the women, women and men together, uh -huh. which is very specific. It was, uh, it was absolutely normal, also uh, different generation were there. There was normal this jockey with some uh, 80s ABBA songs and small, mm -hmm. small place for dancing. And it was kind of family life somehow, because mm -hmm. the core of pe person, they came there. Mostly they have some coming out behind them, so they are pretty open. It was a lot of uh, humor there, a lot of, um, we, we lo uh, laughed. Uh, from morning, for from from the first second till the last. Okay, this is this this uh, the bright side, yeah. Mm, yeah. And uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, personal stories behind, a lot of uh, broken heart and, and oh, so yeah. on. But oh, yeah. somehow, was it the place where people felt really uh, very free? Mm. And uh, okay, it was. Definitely was it controlled by secret police, and uh, it was, we have some saying uh, under the uh, lamp, is the, the it's the, the darkest, it's the darkest place spot. on... Uh, under the lamp, there is the darkest night, let's uh, say. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, I spent there uh, really, at the beginning, when I, uh, try to prepare my my way to start photography. I spend there almost every night drinking mm. vodka and vodka and vodka. So it, so it cost me uh, a lot of my uh, <laughs> my body suffered a little bit, but <laughs> but uh, it yeah. was for me pretty much complex. And I loved. I have this this uh, possibility to be part of this. Society and yeah, and also it was uh, somehow uh, island of freedom for you and for your. Mm. That's how we describe it, like island of freedom. And there were not many islands, but there were yeah. some, of course, probably controlled by the state back then and by the secret police. But still, it was an island. And what is unique, I think, in the central and eastern european context there is not many images right from gay bars or no images but probably uh, not too many yeah, in personal archives who knows about yeah, yeah, yeah. of course yeah. but we don't know them yeah so um and there is this systematic um uh, picking of those images Libusha has right. uh, hundreds of them uh, and I, I never seen uh, images from those clubs, from Poland, for example, or from, I don't know, Ukraine. Mm. You, because it was tolerated somehow, but the, the society created an atmosphere that it doesn't exist back then in the yeah. 80s. 
So there is not many proofs or images yeah, how, how it looked like, for example. I have to say, by the way, uh, we are preparing the book uh, on uh, tea, tea Club with my editor and publisher and creator, Lucia Cherna, which will be published in spring, somewhere okay. late spring. And uh, it's, it's uh, I, I heard, I was said that it's unique, this, this mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. And also because of this combination, uh, women and men uh, scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, I think also like the, your photography style is mm. unique. It's mm. with, with these flashes, it has like modern language. The photos are modern. Yeah. It's not staged. You see the authenticity, yeah. the, the realness mm. of right. those moments. Right. Well, that comes back also in the editing of this segment of the film. You use colorful flashes and strobes uh, when this is being portrayed. Um, was this a, a decision based on, on this, um, or, or how did you come up with this? Yeah, and also uh, Luce Cherna, Libusha's curator, uh, made uh, one uh, exhibition in Spain or uh, in, in Madrid. Madrid by the and, uh, Foto España. Yeah, mm. and, uh, the, the, and she used uh, some photos uh, like this uh, with, with the color, color, with color yeah. uh, so filters. We yeah. decided that uh, it's the right way to help us to make it more co colorful, mm. like uh, it was in yeah. Tea Club, you know. Yeah. In contrast so with the grayness of the outside world, the yeah. Tea Club yeah. is full of... This is exactly my, my memory uh, on mm -hmm. the space, this uh, vividness, humor and color. Yeah, so yeah. we try to help it uh, this photo somehow to more shiny. And then yeah. Sasha, the editor, got the idea that because Libusha always said that she used flash mm -hmm. so that everybody knew that she's been taking pictures mm -hmm. at that moment. Yeah. That was like uh, an agreement with the people right. that when there is flashing, I'm taking pictures. And Sasha came with the idea to recreate this mm. uh, effect. Uh, in the film, so that's why yeah. there are yeah. stroboscopic and, and stroboscopic. Mm -hmm. It yeah. also adds more uh, of the of the music club or, or yeah. techno club yeah. Uh, sure. feeling. Yeah, and sure. other mm, things uh, is music in our film because uh, it's also big part of it, uh, and we try to use uh, or we wanted to use uh, some content contemporary music uh, because uh, it makes some, uh, you know, uh, contrapunct or uh, mm. something uh, to bring more to uh, now, nowadays or... Yeah. Contemporary yeah. feeling, yeah. Yeah, and also I think this m music uh, help, help uh, us uh, and Sasha, uh, my editor, to make this uh, mm, rapid uh, or rhythm yeah. and uh, rapid yeah. montage um, yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah it, it worked wonderfully for for sure. Um, I read it in an interview with you, Libusha. It was in the Dick magazine, which, by the way, I recommend to yeah. anyone who wants to learn a bit more about um, the queer scene of of uh, this time in in Czechoslovakia. Uh, where you said that, yeah, well, you were not the only one taking pictures um, at the tea club. Can you tell us a bit about, uh, about this? Uh, of, uh, by the parties and birthdays, it was allowed to make some uh, personal pictures. So sometimes there was somebody with the camera as well. But uh, after the Velvet Revolution, uh, it came out uh, in the archive of STB, uh, which was our um, Stasi. Stasi uh, okay. uh, they they found a lot of photos which were made uh, done made uh, during the uh, and nobody was uh, the, the so uh, they uh, somebody told me they they were invited they was they were invited for. Uh, to the to the police and they should to look at the I mean from audience yeah. to look at the photos and uh, they were afraid they they will be my photos mm -hmm. and it was not true yeah. and they were happy I'm not mm -hmm. confident and not not mm -hmm. a collaborator yeah. but and yeah. Yeah. And also, it wasn't artistic photos. Yes, know, it, it was. It, yeah. uh, but yeah. I like saw their 
maybe few times somebody who who did photos, but mostly by the party and only the yeah. the, the personal yeah. uh, personal one table or something yeah. like this. Yeah, and this is very crucial as well because in the film, this is the point where it comes out that maybe this was the first time when you started to think about or realize that okay, what I'm doing mm. can also be used against yeah, sure. other people. Uh -huh. Um, can you tell us about, because there was this very particular story in the film with this murder and, and all uh, of that. Yeah, I, I was not aware long, long time how, how uh, dangerous it could be. And then uh, it was really one, one event, uh, somebody was, uh, uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, Police came to my home and home, and they wanted to see my negatives from the previous evening. Was the uh, they told me somebody was killed, and before this this mur murder, uh, murder? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the person was visited tea club, and they wanted to see if they could uh, uh, to find some uh, traces mm. and. Suddenly, it was a big problem for me because I, I was, uh, and I have some some very ox uh, overexposed, uh, almost black negative. So I did gave to them, but it was my probably my last day. I took photograph there mm. because suddenly I knew uh, I have some some bomb at home, uh, and yeah. I don't want to mm. to be uh, the part who. who so and uh, shortly th after this uh, event, I, I moved to Berlin. So it yeah. was also somehow the, the time of the changing changes. changing yeah. the scene. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, let's talk a bit about Berlin. Of course, we have the Berlin Island, and it's uh, super fascinating. Some of the images that we see about this 1980s is Berlin um, that you took, um, but it also seemed like that this was a very very challenging time in your life uh, it back was. then? It was. I came here and I spoke almost, I, I, I have some school uh, school knowledge of, of German, but it was not enough just only for ordering some coffee or something. Mm. And what was worse, I have eight, uh, eight Deutschmark in my hand. On, on my, and uh, it was really hard because uh, I I have got uh, good luck with some uh, accommodation. I I could sp stay on some some. At the beginning, I have some some spaces where to stay. But I I was pretty dis disoriented. I didn't understood the system. Mm. I didn't know how much uh, I should. Uh, that is everything is my own responsibility to have job and everything. So I learned. I, I studied pretty pretty quick uh, German, but it took me another two, three years before I, I was able to, and without, uh, s suddenly I was alone, without uh, friends, without sex, without uh, without this this uh, colorful word, mm -hmm. everything was gray, it was cold, and I knew only, only thing, it was my decision, it was my, my uh, desire, and I am going to document everything, and I am going to write my diary and taking photos. So uh, step by step, I, I uh, built some some stairs in the in the from from the cave to the to, to the <laughs> yeah, right. street. It took me several several longer time, yeah. but uh, I am very happy. I was here, and I I uh, made it. Yeah, well, we are also very happy because <laughs> it's really great uh, material for sure. Um, yeah, as as a last question, what I was really thinking about, it was so strong and it was so inspiring to see how many times you kind of restarted with everything. <laughs> and But there was this complete unwavering belief and passion about photos, taking pictures, writing your diaries, and and defining for yourself what it means to be a photographer, regardless of what anybody around you thinks about that or how they would define that. 
Um, and I, I, I really wonder, like, how did you keep this engine, as you said, running? And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> no. Yeah, of course. I don't know exactly, but yeah. somehow, maybe I'm a pretty optimistic person, in fact. <laughs> could be. <laughs> maybe I have also bad memories, so I could uh, uh, quick uh, Go, I could forget, uh, forget, forget everything. Yeah. So, so, uh, and uh, and maybe you 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 thought that uh, it was some kind of therapy for you. And the and photography also, always was was yeah, uh, and also mm. proof or of pure existence, uh, you right. know. Yeah. And so I was al always asking who I am and why I am yeah. and where I am. Yeah. And uh, for example, when I came. La to, to Berlin, I, I spent a lot of time just watching into the uh, mirror and asking, yeah. uh, "Am I? Am, uh, it's me. Uh, mm. uh, live, I'm living. Uh, no, I don't. I am able to make this question, but it was really. I looked. I I was searching for my identity and all this this. For me, it was big surprise when I saw the final uh, final version of movie of, of the film because I didn't know how uh, constantly and uh, really systematically I document, documented right. my, my life. I would call it like a personal scientific experiment <laughs> in collecting, you know, proofs of something and then yeah. reinterpreting it in a way. What I also personally like about the story is that Libusha was never afraid to start over, to start yeah. again. There is uh, an element of bravery of in course. it. And nowadays when we are reading about young generations who are feeling very anxious about mm. the future and the anxiousness is like really a big, a huge um, emotional, let's say, I don't Spirit. know, struggle yeah. right now for, for the young generation. That's what I like about Lebusha's story, that she was never too anxious, too afraid. It was always worth to, to try, at Even least. I have had a long period of angst and, and depression, and, and I felt many times pretty lost. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. But somehow it was this wave-like yeah. and... Uh, and it's empowering, in a way, yeah, also for the audiences, is. I think. That look, it, there's always a chance to start over. There's yeah. always a chance that when you are, I don't know, uh, 65, somebody will appreciate yeah. what you have done the whole life. Yeah. Somebody will notice. Yeah. And that you have the choice, it's, you know, that, yeah. that mm -hmm. it's in your hand at the end of the day. And even like, you know, like it's such a repressive environment in the, in the communist bloc and everything. But Again and again, you were able to to reinvent and and go further with with what you believed in, and I think that's definitely a very strong message that people can take away and and cherish. Yeah, yeah. that's what we hoped for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much. It really was a pleasure. I hope that I didn't um, pressure no, you too much with no. this. Yeah, um, it was nice. Question yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty nice. Everything perfect. So thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And yeah, have fun at the Berlinale. Enjoy thank the you. festival. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks, guys.